Hi, Ellie. I'm so happy I get to be here with you. I'm so happy I get to see your big smile. Is there anything that you want to say to the world? My name is Ellie. Ellie is such a great and beautiful name. I'm so happy I get to be your friend, Ellie. When we got to America and her doctors here saw her, they don't know how she was able to survive that long. And I think that it was because she fed off of my strength, I fed off of her strength, and we stayed alive together because we knew that our family has a big story to tell and that the story wasn't over. Welcome to SBSK. Join me as I travel around the world and interview individuals living with a condition to prove no matter how you communicate or what obstacles you face, you're always deserving of love and acceptance. So without hesitation, let's meet today's friend. How do you feel right now? Scared. It's okay to be scared. Sometimes when I do something new, I feel a little scared too. But I'm proud of you because you decided you wanted to do this interview. And to do something you're scared of, that is amazing and it shows how strong you are. So I'm proud of you and you should be proud of yourself. I'm so proud of you for saying that you were scared. Everybody gets scared and now you have a way to verbalize that. And I think that's amazing because you're amazing. And you can take your time, and whenever you're ready, you can share anything you'd like to share. How important is it to validate when she expresses her emotions and says, I'm scared? Validating her emotions is, is everything, because I want her to feel that she can do that, and that she can express her emotions, and they will be understood. You can take your time. I know it's hard work. And I know you're working really hard to learn all of this, and I'm proud of you. And it's already paying off. You're communicating so many things to me. It's so neat to hear all your ideas. I'm happy to be here with you. I met Ellie when she was nine months old. Um, she was living in a baby's home, also known as an orphanage or foster home, in a rural part of Ghana, West Africa, where I was living as a missionary or volunteer. And I met her, she was nine months old. She weighed only five pounds. What do you think Ellie was nervous about? I think she's nervous to show off her new device because she's just learning about it and she's just learning how to navigate it. So she gets nervous when, because you don't want to say the wrong thing. Yeah. It's okay though, everybody makes mistakes. You can always have a do-over second chances, and you can just explore with your device because <laughs> it's your voice. I'm proud of you for trying and you're doing a great job. And I know as you continue to learn, you're gonna be able to communicate more and more and show off how smart you are. My favorite animal is a penguin. Thank you for telling me that. I went into the baby's home one day to visit her and I saw her not as just a child that I sponsored or a child that I was visiting, but I saw her as my daughter. And that happened overnight. And from that moment on, I knew that I was made to, to fight for her and fight with her. You want to hear a fact about penguins? I would love to hear a fact about penguins. You can tell me anything you want to tell me about penguins. Penguins have adapted flippers to help them swim in the water. I didn't know that. Thank you for teaching me about penguins. You're so smart, my friend. And I'm enjoying learning all about the things you're interested in. Thank you so much for sharing the penguin facts. I know that penguins are your favorite animal. And you go and visit them at the zoo. Are you going to visit them at the zoo today? Yeah, you are. The days when her health was failing and she didn't have a lot of fight left in her were some of my darkest and hardest days of my entire life because I couldn't bear to think about losing her 
and I couldn't bear to think about being stuck in Ghana for any longer without access to medical care. But even on those hardest days, I would look at her and tell her that she was worthy of life and that I knew that her story wasn't over, that she had so much more to show the world and to tell the world and that I just needed her to keep fighting for that day. Because if I told her to keep fighting for a month or a year longer, that might seem like too much. It might seem like a lot for anybody. But if I said, can you conquer the day? Can we get through the day or can we get through the hour? Can we get through the minute? That is how everything built up and how we survived for three and a half years in Ghana. I like to go shopping at Target. Target is such a cool store. I like to go shopping at Target. I love Target too. I'm sure that you have a lot of fun there and I'm so happy you got to tell me that. Is it important to reinforce her as she's learning after she does say something? Yes, and every treat everything that she says with value and with purpose. So respond to everything that she says even if she then corrects herself and says something different or you know, reinforce her and praise her even if it's not contextual. So everything that comes out of her device is your voice. And as you learn how to use your device better and better, you can say more things and respond to more things and tell everyone all about penguins, all about yourself. Yeah. So I met Ellie at nine months old. I got foster custody of her when she was 16 months old, and I didn't get to adopt her until she was four and a half. So we lived in Ghana for three and a half years going through the foster process, the adoption process, and the US immigration process. And it took that long because I first had to become a Ghanaian resident, which was two years. So I had to foster her for two years, then apply to adopt her, and I was met with a lot of struggles because in Ghana there are three main adoption laws. You have to be 25, you have to be married, and you have to be 21 years older than your child. Which I will never be 21 years older than her because of our birthdays. And at the time, I was only 23, and I was not and am not married. So I had three strikes against me, but I knew that Ellie's only chance at life was getting to America with American medical care. So I had to find a way around all of those laws while still it being a legal adoption. So I found that there was a clause that said, in the best interest of the child. So that superseded all other laws. So that is what the high court judge ruled on to allow me to adopt her even though I didn't meet the three adoption requirements. Um, and it had never been done before in Ghana, so it was a complete and utter miracle that I was able to adopt her before I turned 25 because she was potentially only weeks or months away from death. Thank you for telling me that you like to shop at Target. You did it My name is Ellie. Ellie! I love that name. I wanna, I wanna sing it and dance it. Ellie, Ellie, Ellie. Ellie, Ellie, Ellie. What was the general mentality towards Ellie in Ghana? So many Ghanaians believe that children with disabilities are cursed or evil or wicked. They have a belief that there is this god of the sea that comes and implants a child with a disability in a mother's womb um, because of something that that woman or someone within her family did wrong from something minor up until major. So they believe that having a child with a disability is a direct burden and a curse because of something that you did wrong. So the general consensus about children with disabilities is that you need to get rid of them by way of abandonment or bigger methods. What do you think the world should know about you? Should they know that you're joyful? Should they know that you're smart? Should they know that you are amazing? Should they know that you're brave? <laughs> okay, they really should know that you're brave. <laughs> yeah. What are Ellie's official diagnoses? Ellie is diagnosed with spastic quadriplegia cerebral palsy, polymicrogyria, microcephaly, and epilepsy. What do all those fancy words mean? <laughs> Um, spastic quadriplegia cerebral palsy means that all four of her limbs are affected by CP. So her 
it is a brain injury that causes muscles to be tight. Um, so both her arms and her legs are affected. This can also affect things like swallowing, verbal speech, head control, neck control. Um, it affects pretty much every aspect of her body. Uh, microcephaly, it means small head. So her head circumference is below the standard. Um, so she has a full brain, but it's just compacted. She also has polymicrogyria, which if you break that word down, poly means many, micro means small, and gyria are folds. So her brain has many small folds on it. I'm having fun. Yes, this is brain. Oh, <gasps> you're gonna make me cry. You're bored. <laughs> just kidding. I think it's funny that you told a joke. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> Does she love telling jokes? She, she's her biggest fan. <laughs> Do you like telling jokes to friends? Yeah, I think your joke is hilarious. I'd love to hear more jokes that you tell. Ellie laughs all day long, sometimes all night long. If you're staying up late. Yeah, you love to laugh. You've been joyful since the moment I met you. It's always a fun time meeting new friends. And I know you're my friend because you taught me all about penguins. You're telling me your favorite things. Do you want to hear a fact about penguins? Yes! Yes, I do! I want to hear everything about penguins. This is fun. Thanks for watching SBSK. We believe the world is a better place when everyone takes the time to understand one another. If you want to be part of the community of people who believe that, click the big yellow SBSK button to subscribe. Thank you, and see you next time.